Science. We know how important science is, how much of an effect it's had on our lives, how the equations written by physicists across the space-time continuum shape our very reality and create what we consider to be the norm. Nor do we. What has science really done for us? What kind of real effect on our normal lives has some crazy old man slaving away in front of a blackboard and densely populated with a seemingly illegible soup of numbers and letters for his whole life actually had on us as the people? Why should we invest in science? Why is it important? Why does it even matter how the universe works if we don't gain anything from it? Well, what's important to understand is that science is the root of everything in our modern society that we consider completely normal. From your phone, to your laptop, to your fridge, even your car. In fact, almost everything that makes your life as simple as it is, is the result of thousands of years of accumulated scientific understanding. Sciences of the past, the sciences that we're aware of, do more for us than we think. Newtonian gravity is still used today for launching rockets into space, sending satellites to orbit, launching missiles and more. Einstein's famous E equals MC squared is what allowed us to create nuclear weaponry. That might not sound like such a great thing, but it was a nuclear missile, nuclear weapon that won World War II for the Allies. I can keep telling you all this, but I'm sure a lot of you are asking for the proof. How does an inch long equation allow us to create a nuclear weapon? Well, to truly appreciate most science, you need to know maths, advanced calculus, and other completely foreign languages to the average person, which is part of the reason it goes so underappreciated. E equals mc squared is actually quite simple to understand, however. A stationary, a stationary object E, or energy, is equal to its m, mass, times c squared, the speed of light squared. Um, this is the reason that we, are allowed, we can build nuclear weapons, because it tells us that objects contain an immense amount of energy. C squared is a massive number. And any kind of mass, therefore, implies a huge amount of potential energy. And nuclear power is just harnessing this energy. Einstein has done more for us than just nuclear power and overpowered weapons. His equations for relativity and special relativity allow for GPS, so anytime you any time you, you use location services on your phone, every time you update your Facebook status, every time that annoying voice in your car barks orders at you, Einstein is responsible. So, we can see science has been useful in the past, but what should we be studying now? Well, the most popular area in modern physics is the hunt for the theory of everything, the big questions, what happened before the Big Bang, what happens when you pass the event horizon on a black hole? Do we live in a multiverse? Well, these questions are yet to be answered, and it's important that we try to answer them because we can't even begin to predict the repercussions of such a deep and fundamental understanding of the universe in which we live. If we look at science of the past, very rarely do we actually see someone set out to answer a question without unintentionally opening a whole new world of technology opportunities. And right now, we're asking and trying to answer the biggest, most fundamental questions there are. Think of all the new technologies this could uncover. The technology of tomorrow that will make our grandchildren view us as primitive and silly. This is what we should be pushing for. This is why science is important. However, you being a group of intelligent people will be asking for the proof. I mean, it all sounds like fiction. It sounds like science fiction, but it sounds like fiction. But as you move into the future, the fiction begins to fade and science kind of takes over. For example, invisibility. When you say invis invisibility, a lot of people think of something along the lines of Einstein's invisibility cloak. He thinks of something like, um, yeah, something that's just powered by magic. No science, no, no maths or any of that stuff. Just something that you can wave a wand and it happens. And that's not really the case anymore because I mean, there are already prototypes for a cloak of invisibility. The experts on this subject say that we should be expecting it in the next 10 to 15 years. What about artificial intelligence? You know, robots that are as smart as us, a completely new life form to share our planet with. R2-D2 and C-3PO being real. How long until this happens? Well, most scientists and experts in artificial intelligence say 
you know, a hundred years, probably <coughs> fifty. But other things to look forward to, you've got the Google Glass project, or Google's Project Glass, which they've made glasses, which are computers, which project images into your eye. They have a camera on them, you can text your friends, you can tell you can update your Facebook, what do whatever you want, all through your glasses. Um, following that you'll have stuff like internet accessible contact lenses. Um, basically you'll be able to Google with your mind without touching anything. Um, so that's exciting. Stuff like smart wallpaper. Um, wallpaper that has emotions, that asks you how your day was, it says, hey, do you want me to turn up the temperature a bit? You're looking a bit cold. You know, do you want me to turn the lights on, off, whatever? Uh, smart toilets may be the cure for any disease you can think of because a toilet that every time in which you pee in it does a full body evaluation and tells you, oh, you're going to have cancer emerge in 20 years. You can be like, oh, cool, I'll go to the shop, we'll go to the doctors and get rid of this cancer before it's actually a problem. Misha Kaku, a uh, well-respected physicist, did a wonderful speech on how in the future computers will disappear, becoming everywhere but nowhere, much like electricity is now, compared to when we first harnessed it, being huge bolts of lightning on a Tesla coil. This isn't just guesswork, it's an accurate study of history and a prediction made by people who've spent their whole lives looking into this. It's hard to believe all these things to be possible, but if you go back in, a, if you go back in time, like a hundred years, and you show someone your iPhone and all of the stuff you can do with it, you probably get burned at the stake for being a witch. I mean, there's no knowing what tomorrow will hold, but it's safe to say that the science of today will largely affect the future. Our lives in 20 years will be completely different to the ones to our lives today. Our children will live in a completely different world to the one in which we live. We know yesterday discoveries have improved our daily lives immensely, and it's important to recognize that investing in science today will bring an evolved happiness for tomorrow. So tell your friends about science. Appreciate the work that thousands of people's lives have been devoted to just to make your life a little bit better, and ultimately learn to love and understand this beautiful universe in which we live through the eyes of science. Thank you.